All right, I'm going to talk to you guys about building a bulletproof engine and the reason we're starting out with this 36 horse is you got to know, uh, first of all, that Volkswagen started out engineering this car on this platform here, which is the 25 36 horse motor. Um, and they started with this and then they just kept adding to it. So the engineering in the beginning was basically for this engine and little by little they've made it more and more powerful and now all of us are saying well that's not even enough and we're going for more power and basically you know uh, the engineering was started made for this small 36 horsepower engine and so that's something we need to keep in mind remember we're talking about 50 year old technology and 50 year old technology is you know is only going to have so much that you're going to be able to uh, do so you have to one up what they did and you have to do some different things different and some guys will say well you know original stock is the best you know if you do anything else um, then you know you're trying to rethink something VW did um, I'm gonna tell you that that's true in some respects but there's a lot of things that have changed over the years so uh, one of the things is we don't any longer have leaded fuel which they had leaded fuel when this car came out um, they actually have changed the fuel formulas as well as the leaded fuel so now uh, they have more alcohol in the fuel um, all those things all change the engineering requirements that so you kind of have to do a little bit of your backyard engineering even though people say there's no way you can backyard engineer better than Volkswagen well over the years, a lot of guys have learned stuff, um, and we can learn from all of them, and some of those things we've learned from them, and, and they actually do work better than the original stuff. So just keep in mind, remember, this was a 36 horsepower platform in the beginning, or a 25 horsepower platform in the beginning, and uh, they basically changed, they didn't change much of the original design, and they just kept making it have more and more power, and now we're putting big engines in. So, like I said, there are limits to all this stuff. So, let's talk about some of the things that you need to do to build that bulletproof engine. So, a lot of this stuff is just basic knowledge, and a lot of it's my opinion. And some guys aren't going to like my opinion. But uh, be sure to comment on those things that you don't like or like. We like to hear it. And, and you guys who are watching the video, uh, head down to those comments and make sure you thumbs up, thumbs down. You know, the ones that are inappropriate or appropriate and uh help everybody out um because we can leave that as kind of like a forum of what things to do so the things that are out today are different than things that were back even you know when i was building engines back you know years ago all this stuff has changed and i don't really build many of them myself anymore um so i have to kind of collaborate a lot of the stuff with chris who's got a lot more experience with today's stuff um, like back in the old days, we would never use a 90, 94, uh, bore. And because it was, because what happens with the 94, if you look at this case back here is your studs. Let's see if I can get a little closer. When you open up the cylinders too far, the studs get too close to the, uh, the bore here on the cylinders. So, you know, we're kind of pushing the limits of these engines by going too large and so I, I don't like to go 94s um, and because you have to go with the smaller studs a lot of times uh, so I think that that's kind of a you know if you're gonna go 94s to me there's a couple different things you can do to make that work out is number one if you're gonna go larger than a 78 millimeter crank um, or and you want it to be bulletproof i mean of course you can use this stuff for the track you know one of these cases like this for the track no problem but if you're going to go to uh, uh larger than a 90 92 um i would say go with an aluminum case uh, because then they're designed more for that the funny thing about aluminum cases that i don't know why they didn't do and maybe if somebody's watching and designs them uh why didn't they put a four quart case Four quart uh, sump on them, so that was kind of a idiotic. I don't know why they did all that to re-engineer a case and didn't put a four quart sump. It's just weird. But 
you know, for daily driver, but because I don't know, maybe they were making them for track cars. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, that's one of the issues when you go too large, you're going to run into problems there. Um, and, and also when you start doing the, uh, uh, when you start going to like a, uh, it's not 82, you know, or something like that, you have to cut up a lot more of your case inside, you know, or larger than that, especially, um, definitely go to aluminum case. Um, especially, you know, 82 is even pushing it. I would like to see like a 78 in a stock case, unless you just got cases laying around. You don't care if it doesn't last that long, uh, but that's not really the point of this video. So, uh, you know, I kind of have a cutting point. It's 70, larger than 78. I like to see aluminum case. Well, smaller than 78, um, you can actually do uh, a regular mag case and be okay. Uh, and and because what it is is more reciprocating motion here because now you have uh, larger pistons and you have more distance moving up and down. Uh, it puts more stress on this case. So this is your this is what you're thinking about by your you kind of kind of have to be your own engineer when you start going larger on the engine. So. Uh, that's one of the things I like to see. Um, to build a bulletproof engine, I would always say go with a counterweighted crank. So one of my things is, is if you're gonna go down today, uh, back years ago, a uh, counterweighted crank for 16 for 69 was you know pretty cheap. And then if you wanted to get a stroker crank, it was a lot more money. Now basically your stroker cranks are almost the same price as your um, as your counterweighted crank and you get the forge chromoly steel. So having the forge chromoly steel is more bulletproof than the regular one. So, you know, putting up to a 78 in, putting a 76, um, going to 74 is okay, but the problem with that is you end up with more shims in your, in, in, with your cylinder head and uh, with, your, with your pistons and your engine becomes kind of wide, you know. So uh, if you go with the 74, it's kind of odd. It's kind of an odd one, but the 78, 76, 78 um you, you, there's like not too much machining that needs to be done in the case and um the, you can do that pretty much and still and be pretty bulletproof as long as you're not powering up the rest of the engine now if you're starting to put like major carburation on it you're starting to put you know then you're talking about more case stress then like i said if you're going to be putting 48s on it you know stuff like that um then you kind of got to follow another rule and go to that aluminum case to me you know just just stronger but better volumetric, volumetric efficiency, um, less stress. The case will handle a lot more stress. It's a different design than the original design, so it is better in those respects. It is heavier, so a lot of guys will say, oh, it's heavier, and it does run a little bit hotter, but um, that heat can be uh, taken over by the fact that the case is a lot stronger and doesn't expand and contract, contract as much as um, the... Uh, mag case so anyway magnesium so anyway those are the kind of basic rules that i follow when i'm going for bulletproof um one of the things i don't like to go if you're going to go bulletproof you want it to be you know reliable hop in it start it up and drive it is i don't like to put on dual carbs um, because what happens is you're always constantly especially webers i mean these things are great for performance uh, but for daily driving and you're talking about bulletproof um they constantly are having problem with the jets clogging and you're you're going to be adjusting them all the time so yeah as far as bulletproof i would say you steer clear from the the, the big carbs stay with the stock you know either a single carb uh stock type carb or i like a two barrel on mine because i'm going to be going with a bigger engine i'm going to be doing a build here pretty soon so um I'm going with a little bit bigger engine and so if you're going with like a 78 millimeter crank you can run a still still run a stock carb on it. You can run a, a stock 34 and it'll work great. Um, but it does help to give it a little bit more carburation. Um, if you're just going for torque, you know, you can use the stock carb and it does work really well. People, feel, people will tell you, no, that doesn't work, but it does. It actually works very well. Um, it just gives you uh, some more power, bottom end power. And you can use a stock transmission as long as you're not, you know, Mr. Punch it and, and you know, sidestep in the clutch race, man. You know, if you're just driving regular, you know, normal, but you just want a little more power, you can put the bigger motor in as long as you don't use the power, you know, and start putting big carbs on it and stuff like that. That's when you start really breaking stuff because you get more horsepower, you know, versus just having more torque, 
and more torque is gives you better drivability. Um, you need a little bit more horsepower, but mostly the torque is your friend. So, uh, heads. Uh, there's a couple of different heads that you can get. Um, if you can find uh, a used set of the Mexican heads, those are pretty good. Um, I do have a set, and so I and uh, the the thing about the set that I have, um, the only thing is, you know, you almost end up paying for your machining and and other stuff, stuff like that. By the time you're done, you get to buy yourself a brand new pair of the uh, AA performance heads, and those have a repositioned spark plug to make sure that they don't crack as easy. Um, I don't know that much about the long term on those, but I believe that they will last longer because they're re-engineered and a little bit better, I think, than the original heads. So they were trying to one up the originals. So I got to find my Mexican heads now because I'm probably going to use those on this engine. But um, so anyway, those are a few things there. Uh, performance cam. Uh, the reason I like to see a performance cam in your bulletproof build is because the stock cam what it does is it kind of has a power curve that kind of drops off at like uh, 3500 rpms somewhere is some right after that it starts to drop off pretty quickly and today's roads with the freeways and stuff like that um you're going to be running at sometimes higher rpms going to get pass somebody stuff like that and uh the, with a performance cam you can get more air and fuel through your heads and that will help make it actually i believe run a little bit cooler and also will um uh, give you um, a better advanced curve on your uh, on your on your valve timing uh when you're going down the freeway so it won't run quite as hot you know when you're driving with more rpms so uh those are things that i like to see on a perform on a uh, on a performance engine or even stock if you're going to go run, run stock i'd like to see a performance cam almost everything i put together uh, because it's just it they just they just work better on um, the the factory cam, um, you know it just for today's fuel today's roads, uh, you know more air and more fuel kind of gives you a little bit more, uh, it gives you a little bit more uh, a little bit cooler burn because if you have that higher you know uh, fuel to air mixture, um, then it actually will help run the engine a little bit cooler, and people will say oh no stock originals better you know. Um, yeah, I mean, it was originally, and since, like I said, things have changed, you know, a lot of the alcohol in the fuel today, all that stuff, even the guys who that say that they don't have alcohol in the fuel, the fuel mix, uh, fuel formulas have totally changed. If you can, if you're in one of those states where they have the non-alcohol fuel, um, even the formulas of those, I think have changed quite a bit and they're not like the old fuel was. So don't think it's the same and especially it's not leaded. So in you know, so a lot of people say, you know, I can run, you can run regular gas. There's this, there's this whole thing about uh, 91 Ron equals, you know, 87 octane and, you know, all this stuff, you know, people say, and listen, you know, back then they had leaded fuel. Now they don't have leaded fuel. So you can't use the same rule of thumb with that. You know, you can't say, oh, well, that's the same. It's not the same. So running premium fuel is definitely a must with Volkswagen engine. Not and today. That's the best way to combat with. And the reason is, is because you have higher combustion temperatures. So when you have higher combustion temperatures, you have um, more uh, more chance of detonation. And detonation is the death of a VW engine. So um, if uh, and you might not even hear it. it. Might be just enough to just ruin the engine and make it not last. And uh, because you have detonation. Another thing you want to look at is compression. You want to stay with a pretty low compression engine um, so that uh, it doesn't get that same same reason. So you're not getting really high um, combustion temperatures. Because the design of the VW engine, uh, and when the piston's at top dead center, it's about, you know, what, 60 thousandths from the top of the cylinder. And when most cars are, you know, top dead center is, is flat with the cylinder head. Um, but you know, they have a the gasket and then there's um, the chamber inside there. So being that it fires below the top of the cylinder head, uh, below the top like that, it's, it's not quite all the way. Um, that's another reason, uh, to cause more detonation because the air, I don't know how it works, but it actually ends up going into the rings and stuff like that where it doesn't, it doesn't run as runs hotter from doing that. That's what I've understood from other people that explained it to me. 
So I don't know exactly how to explain that part, but it does. That's part of the reason why that they don't like high compression. So um, run, you know, running up to a maximum maybe of eight and a half to one if you're going to go performance is probably pretty safe for to be in the bulletproof area um, and, and, and other things. So on your on your cylinders, um, I like to see like a 90 and a half cylinder. You can even go to a 92. And the reason you can go to a 92, and a lot of old schools of guys are going to tell you, no, no, you don't do a 92 because they're a thin wall. Listen, the new technology is, is what they use is something called a thick wall, uh, a thick wall 92. And what it does is you're supposed to bore the cylinders out to the 94 opening, okay, and put them in. But what they do is they machine the, uh, the part where it inserts into the, the cylinder, where it inserts in. I don't know if I have any cylinders laying around. Hmm, maybe. Let's look around. Hang on. Here we go. So they machine this portion out that slips into there down. Uh, so it's this part's thin, kind of like if you guys have ever, old school guys have ever built a 1641. They machine this part down. And what you do is you open up your heads to the for the 92 or the 94, the same size as the 94. And it's a thicker wall than even the 94 is. And then you have this really thin wafer part that goes in. Now, you do lose some strength over here because there's always a little bit of movement, you know, in your, you know, that you can't see in your piston and cylinder um, and spanning and, and, and contracting. And so you can run a 92 thick wall and actually still be a, a pretty bulletproof engine because the uh, top is going to be, you know, where the, where the cylinder fires, you know, where it fires is in the head, you know, mostly. Your, so your combustion temperature is mostly in your head, not as much in your cylinder. But um, if your th cylinder is nice and thick, um, and you, you all you have to do is open that head up to make the cylinder go on it actually is a pretty safe bulletproof way to build and you can go to a 92 and still be pretty good so again you go you guys i'm not the engine builder anymore i, I used to do these things many years ago and i don't put them together um i, I hung around a lot of racers i know a lot of racing stuff but i was never a racer myself i didn't do the track stuff so Sometimes the racer guys, I used to hang out, hang around them, so I know all the stuff that's going on pretty much. But um, I can't tell you specifics on, you know, you know, thrust cuts and all that stuff. I I know about it, but it's not something that I do all the time. So you know, I can't tell you guys all that stuff. Um, I I don't like to see, uh, you know. So if you're gonna build a new engine, you know, if let's say for instance, if I'm gonna take and I'm gonna build a new engine, I'm gonna go performance. I'm going to go a small stroker, okay, so I can get the, uh, so I can get the uh, chromoly crank, okay, and then I'm going to go with a performance cam, okay, and I'm going to go up to, I'm going to go with probably 90 and a half, or I could even go to a 92, it's thin wall, okay, this is what I would build for myself for, for a bulletproof engine performance uh, for street, and I would run uh, the AA, they have the big valve, heads um that are ported and all that you know they're only like 50 dollars more than the regular ones if i was going to need to buy heads if i didn't have a set of good mexican heads like i have i would go with the aa um, big valve heads and like i said because the the way that they uh, redesigned the combustion chamber it seems to me like it would actually work better than the original volkswagen one did because i looked at it pretty closely i was like pretty impressed with that and I would use a two barrel carb on it and run with that um, and with a mag case. And if I was going to go bigger than that, I would go with an aluminum case or whatever, whatever crank and, you know, stuff you want in there. Uh, then you need to decide what size, you know, rods you're going to go with and all that stuff. Um, then I would go maybe to a, uh, to an I-beam rod or H rod and I would go with, um, you know, if I'm going to go more than 6,000 R, uh, more than 6,800 RPMs, I would go with Wiseco pistons. Um, you know, uh, and but I, you know, that's you're not going to be in the bulletproof route zone though. You're going to be talking about possibly, you know, something that could blow up. So it, they really don't like to go that many RPMs. So, but they'll do it. So anyway, but if I was going to do that, that's the kind of direction that I would go. Um, and it's really expensive to build that. So you're also going to need, you know. You know, scat 
I like to stay with scat parts. Um, scat stuff is most of it's made in America still, um, you know, and uh, they have a pretty good quality of parts and most of it's engineered properly. Um, like, you know, he, yeah, cause even his valve covers, he looks, he goes, yeah, look at the empty ones. They look the same except the sides. They don't put the, uh, the, the support all the way around, you know, there's just different, you know, there's a, there's small, subtle differences that make a huge difference. So, you know, those are the types of things that I would do. I'm just trying to give you guys some hot heads up. Now, if you go bigger, let's say you go with a bigger engine than stock, um, you also want to go with a light and flywheel and people go, well, you don't need a light and flywheel with a bigger engine. Yes, yes, you do. Because what happens is that engine, the bigger engine wants to rev quicker um, than the smaller engine. OK, because it's got it's got more more pop to it. And so what happens is you've still got that that little flywheel, that little flywheel with four dowels or even eight dowels in it. Um, and every time you rev the engine, it, it actually puts more stress on those dowels. So if you put a, uh, put a lightened flywheel on it, um, what that does is takes some of the stress out of there so that when it revs up, it's not trying to rev that heavy flywheel. So it's better, you're better off when you build a performance engine going with a lightened flywheel. That's why people do it. People think, oh, you don't need that. It just makes it rev quick. No, it's all a part of making it stronger and lasting more, better and uh, being being better for long-term performance. So anyway, that's a little bit about it. Hopefully I didn't miss much. Um, I know you guys will comment and tell me I missed a lot of things. Of course, uh, if you're looking at um, stuff like uh, engine tin and stuff like that, remember again, always run the cool tin, the extra uh, type three engine tin on the bottom of your engine. Guys, again, will say that that does not work. Um, and I've definitely have tested it and it does work it does make your engine run cooler um let's see if i have a set here so anyway i can't find them they're here but anyway it's the cylinder tin that goes underneath you look up type three uh cylinder tin and you'll find the ones that go underneath the cylinders that have the metered holes in them uh it diverts the air uh it actually meters the air going through the cylinders and allows uh, the proper amount to go around the cylinders so that more air can go through the heads. I mean, just the, the whole idea of that makes complete sense. I mean, it's on Porsches. They're on airplanes. Um, they, you know, people say, oh, it's because of the direction of the air. It, it, you know, it's just, no, it's just more efficient. It's just a better way to keep the air managed. So um, you, if you get those cool 10 things, you'll find out. Put a TED temp on before and after, and then show me that it doesn't work. If you use it and, and you say it doesn't work, and you're the one of those guys that says, hey, it doesn't work, put a head temp on your motor and run it before and after, and then shut the hell up. Don't say any more because you're going to find out that it does work. Okay. So uh, those guys that want to comment on that, uh, go for it. Um, the people that say, oh, well, Volkswagen made a bulletin that uh, says that it doesn't work. Of course they did. I mean, they're not going to tell anybody they're wrong. You know, they're going to tell, oh yeah, our engineering was wrong. And uh, by the way, we're going to eat all these engines. That you... <laughs> no, they're not going to do that. Come on, you know, not, don't be stupid about it. Um, but if, yeah, if you're, if you're one of those guys that's, you know, you, you, you got all the time in the world and you think you're right, do it with it, with it and without it. And then you're going to prove to yourself, like I've been proven to myself that it does work. So anyway, I'll start. All right. That's it for the uh, building, building a bulletproof engine. There, there's more to know than that. Um, but, uh, you kind of have that mindset, uh, to realize what you're doing and, uh, that'll kind of give you some direction and then, you know, be smart about it, you know, really think everything through and try and uh, make it work for today. Remember today's fuel, everything's different than it was when this car was built. You know, the technology's changed, you know, we got carburation on these cars. Now everything's fuel injected. So there's just so much more, you know, that you could do. You could even do fuel injection, you know, there's, a, you know, to even manage your fuel better. That would help, help, help with your head temp. You know, there's just so many things you could do, but um, there's only almost so, so much money as well. So anyway, but that's the basic things you could do. And that's how I'm going to build mine. I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe.